Hey, what is going on guys? It's Little Bigness here, and I am here today to bring you guys the Kalos Conference Power Rankings for the GOT, along with uh, this nerd over here. Go ahead and say your name. Hey guys, it's Ben, and I'm here with Drew to record some Power Rankings, so, cool. Yeah, because we have no life and we're deciding to do this anyway. Uh, yeah, exactly. But there are a lot of good teams in the Kalos Conference, and it was really tough to do these rankings. We actually had a lot of disagreements while doing these rankings. But uh, anyway, oh, yeah. I think we should get the show on the road. Like there was, uh, so there was one guy but, I had at number two. You had it like twenty-seven or something like that. Yeah, and we'll probably go into our uh, very uh, differing opinions on all these teams as we go through. But coming in at number 16, we have Trekshur, and uh, Trekshur, he's got, like, he's got an okay team, but one thing I really saw as a big weakness on his team was Bird Spam, because I don't think he has a single flying resist, except for Heliolisk. Yeah, there's Heliolisk, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> that's, uh, th that's scary. <laughs> Fortress, uh, well, Fortress is an, is an incredible physical tank, though, and I'm sure it would be able to eat up, uh, well, most flying hits. Maybe not. Uh, like... yeah. I mean, it kind of depends, and there's also a lot of special flying types out there, like, you know, Tornadus is out there. Yeah, there's that, too. Uh, uh, he has Reuniclus on the team, so he's, he has something that, that can be specially defensive if it needs to be. Uh, true. I mean, he's got Sylveon, too, but... Yeah, that, too. Um... Then another thing, I'm not sure if he has a single ground immunity either. I really didn't like that either. Uh, <laughs> huh. That's a bit of a problem. I, I think that ground immunities are kind of necessary. So I didn't really like Trickster's team too much personally. But he does have some nice things going. Like I like the defensive options he has and also his hazard options. Because having like Fortress to be able to be there and set up a lot of hazards is nice. As well as just Garchomp as a solid rocker. Infernape as a fast rocker if he wants it. And then he's got a lot of things that are able to sweep, with like Mega Sharpedo, uh, you know, if you wanted to run like a Scarfed Infernape or just run priority on that. He's got a lot of good options. And he's got Shaman, which can do a lot of stuff too, but it was just those glaring weaknesses. Like I saw no ground immunity, no flying resist, and both of those really scared me. To be fair though, uh, we've already seen uh, in the, some week one matches that Shaman can be a ridiculous tank and can just like eat up ground type attacks for breakfast. So if he needs a ground resistance, there's Shaman. But uh, you're right that um, his team does have some have some holes in it. But all in all, I think the team is pretty good, especially when um, we only have eight Pokemon in total. There are going to be some holes in every team. So that's true. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that. But also, I really don't see too much speed there. I think his fastest Mon is Heliolisk. I mean, if he doesn't get the Mega Sharpedo speed boost, then that could be an issue. Um, because there are a lot of things that can definitely outpace what he has. He might be forced to run a lot of Scarfers, but he does have very good Scarfers, which kind of redeems that. Yeah, that's true. Alright, you got anything else to say about Trekshire? Uh, not really, other than Fortress is one of the most amazing Pokemon ever, and I love it. Uh, I disagree, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all okay, right, so coming in on. at number 15, uh, we have Mayo, and Mayo, he has like an okay team to me. Uh, I, I again saw the weaknesses. I, I think this was another team where I didn't really see a solid flying resist, but he does have good ways to revenge kill the flying uh, types, which is good. Um, I saw like Dark Spam also being a bit of a threat. Like he's pretty weak to knock off. Uh, oh, that's true. He, I didn't even notice dark, that. His dark resist is uh, Weavile. <laughs> that's and, actually uh, funny. He doesn't really have too much to switch in on physical attacks as well. Like He'd have to switch in Scissor on a knockoff, basically. So Scissor could lose a lot of viability with uh, you know, the ability to lose a Choice Band or Leftovers or something like that. Uh, because he doesn't want to switch any of like his bulky Pokemon like Slowbro or Blissey or potentially Megalodios in on a knockoff. So there's stuff like that. Um, also, yeah, I think I'm not sure if Diggersby gets rocks or not, but I think Blissey's his only rocker too. Um, I yeah, I don't know if he gets it or not either, but I mean it would make sense because it's a ground type and it was a move tutor. Uh, I could look that up, but I could also not because I'm lazy. Uh, the I first thing. 
I think it gets stealth rocks. I know it gets spikes though. All right, the first thing that I noticed about Mayo's team is the Slowbro Blissey core, and like that's really cool because Slowbro is more physically defensive. Blissey is known for being like a hyper special tank, and Slowbro also has regenerator, so like they kind of like balance each, balance each other out in a way. Also, Slowbro resists fighting, so that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I think cores like that are kind of downgraded in Gen 7, though. Because you can't really have that, you know, super physically bulky tank as well as the super specially bulky tank. Unless you have Skarmory Chansey, which is probably the best core of that aspect in the game. Because oh, yeah. Z-moves kind of hurt that a lot. Like, what if you go against the physical electric type with uh, Gigavolt Havoc? Or what if you go against a really strong dark type with... Uh, you know, like a certain Z move. Uh, I forget what the dark Z move is, but uh, that could really hurt Mayo's team a lot. There's not really anything he has to respond to that. Like, Weavile is just a huge threat to this team, for example. So, good thing he has it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, he does have some good stuff there. I, I still saw a little bit of an ice weakness. Uh, with his offensive mods, we did patch that later with getting, you know, certain mods like Scissor and Slowbro. So, good for him. <laughs> or her, is Mayo or her? I have, I literally have no idea. I would assume it's a guy though, because like, uh, there are more guys than girls in Pokemon. Yeah, that's true. So, you're a he, Mayo, until you prove otherwise. So. Yeah, exactly, let's just roll with that. <laughs> Take it that way. Alright, so, um... Coming in at number 14, we have Tony. So, uh, Ben, how about you take Tony and take your thoughts on Tony's team? I know I rather like Tony's team, but I want to hear what you have to say. All right. Um, let's see. I don't really remember looking at this team in advance very much. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, he's got Aggron there as a physical tank. That's cool. Um, he's got Taipu Bulu, which... Um, uh, in my opinion, is one of the is one of the better uh, Tapus. I know that's not usually a popular opinion because you know Lele is kind of broken, and um, uh, then there's the other things. <laughs> but yeah, I really like Tapu Bulu because like uh, grassy terrain is like one of the best terrains in my opinion. Obviously, that's like really controversial because like uh, psychic terrain is in misty terrain or, or psychic terrain is really strong. Um, All the terrains are really good. <laughs> but yeah, but Psychic Terrain is, like, probably the best, arguably. But, I mean, I really like Grassy Terrain. It's, like, it heals up stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I like Tapu Bulu a lot in League format because I think it's kind of like Victini in the way where it's, like, there's not much that can switch into a Tapu Bulu's wood hammer. Exactly. It's so powerful. Yeah, so <laughs> you have to get your switch-ins ready. Uh, but I saw a lot of nice bulk on this team as well that I really liked. Like... He didn't have it much early on. He had Tapu Bulu, which can take some hits from certain mods, but it's also got that quad weakness, which is really concerning. But he had things like Mega Blastoise, Sylveon, and Reuniclus that he picked up later. And I think we already saw a team with a Sylveon Reuniclus uh, defensive core. But yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, there's just a lot of nice bulk. It's a really good bulky offense team right here. Uh, you know, Sylveon can also pass wishes and things like Mega Blastoise, which I really like. Uh, you've also got that solid spinner, and spinners are always good to have. Uh, Reuniclus just gets Magic Guard, so you don't have to like run uh, Heal Belt too much on Sylveon if you're smart with playing against status and having a good status absorber. So, yeah, I saw some really nice uh, bulk if you kind of think about it and think about it with building. Uh, it can be pretty nice if you play it right, but of course that requires you to play it right. So Yeah. But, like, in general, um, Regenerator Reuniclus, well, okay, Magic Guard, well, it depends week by week, obviously, which makes Reuniclus really good in League format, obviously. Yeah, uh, Reuniclus, you, you gotta prep for both, and then also yeah. the threat it has to Calm Mind, like, that's a really good setup sweeper that he has that can be really threatening and close out a lot of games. Uh, while he has those really strong wall breakers and Tapu Bulu, and then he can chain that in, like, a Scarf Infernape. Or, you know, Thunderous, uh, Paralyze stuff, and then you can just think of the options. Because he's got some kind of slow wall-breaking Pokemon, like uh, Aggron and stuff like that. So if you yeah. can use, like, a Prankster Thunder Wave to be able to slow down a lot of threats, and then just send in Aggron to click Head Smash, that can be pretty funny. Uh, yeah, and also, um, 
he's got the Zygarde 10% there. Uh, I think it's really underrated, because, like, if it sets up a Dragon Dance, it just wins. There's not- obviously, it's really frail, and priority moves can hurt it, but it's not gonna get one shot by them, so, like, you can set up a Dragon Dance, not much is gonna be faster than it, and it's just really powerful, in my mind. And Thousand Arrows. Yeah, perfect. Thousand Arrows. <laughs> That's a move but that exists. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thousand Arrows is, uh, what's messed up the entire game of Pokemon. For real. Anyway, uh... We're at number 13 now, right? Yeah, we're at number 13. Yeah. And next we have Daneki, and damn, Daneki's team looks nice. <laughs> it's got a lot of Pokemon that I really like to use. Uh, Mega Gardevoir and Excadrill are two that really stand out to me as Pokemon that I've loved to use in the League format. I just think they're so good. Uh, Salamence is nice. I even like Torrent Greninja. Um, and I think he's got, you know, good options there. Because I love the Excadrill Gigalith uh, Sandcore. And there are also two pretty solid rockers, as well as getting that one spinner, which can help out the Volcarona and the Salamence a little bit. And you also got the Serena to spin, so you've got two solid spinners. You've got the solid Wall Breaker and Mega Gardevoir. Uh, and you've got a lot of good sweeping options, especially with Salamence and Volcarona. Those are really nice sweeping options right there. But, again, I think that this team could potentially be exploited uh, by, you know, maybe, like, strong water types. I think Salamence is the only thing he has to take that on, because most water types do get Ice Beam, or some way to hit Grass types. So Serena isn't really the best check to most offensive water types. So yeah. that was just one thing I noticed, for example. But other than that, I really like uh, Daneki's team. I like what he's got going here. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's just, like, a strong team in general. The most noticeable thing is obviously the Sandcore, as you mentioned before. Uh, there's just, like, not much more to say about it. The team speaks for itself. Yeah, I, I mean, the Comfy pick was a little weird to me, but... I think it's a good Pokemon, because, like, um, priority sustained moves. Like, if you, if you can set up a Calm Mind... Uh, you get Priority Synthesis, uh, Priority Draining Kiss, Priority Leech Seed. Um, I think I think that gets priority. And yeah, I think so too. Once it sets up, it can just be like kind of hard to take down. Yeah, but there are a lot of good responses to it out there. So yeah, that's and true. It's also it's also kind of just a one trick pony, and uh, physical attackers could really harm the company. So that's Plus also it's not true. gonna. It's not going to do too much damage with Draining Kiss, even at plus one, so you have to take like three turns of setup to really get much damage out of the Draining Kiss and make it really effective. But I mean, it, it's it's still priority. So like, It's still priority, yeah. but if you're not doing much damage, you're not going to get much health back. Well, that's also true, but like, you can just keep setting up Calm Minds, and if, you, if you're up against a special attacker, um, it's not going to be taking all that much damage, because it's pretty specially defensive. Not so much on the physical side, though, so like, uh, Bullet Punch is a problem for it. Um, uh, even extreme speed by that logic. Uh, but yeah, I like him. Or just a strong, uh, you know, strong physical attacker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, strong physical attacker in general. Okay, I'll that give you that one. That isn't weak to fairy moves. Then you know. Yeah, exactly. That'll just hit Comfy really hard. Uh, but anyway, coming in at number twelve, we have the Lord Zedin. Uh, and. It, this team I actually really like. This was probably one of them, one team that kind of stuck out to me. But then I kind of looked at things more, and I started to realize a couple of things. Like, I see another ground problem here. Uh, you know, Suicune and Zygarde are pretty bulky Pokemon, as well as Clefable. But, uh, you know, there is the Swellow, which you could say that's a ground immunity right there. Is Swellow really a solid ground immunity? No. That's By definition, answer. yes it is. It's <laughs> it's a literal flying type. But it's it, it, it's not something that wants to switch in. That's the problem. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's the thing. So, when you want a ground immunity, it's really nice to have something that can switch into attacks. Uh, because if it can't switch into attacks, then it's going to get hit hard. And also, you know, Stealth Rocks are there, which could always weaken the Swellow. Oh, yeah. But then, of course, Swellow does have hard switch-ins. I love Swellow. It's, it's like my baby. But uh, 
Uh, one other thing that I really like is that he has two really sturdy rockers, and as someone who favors sturdy rockers in general, having the Heatran and the Clefable there, it's really nice. It's also a good core. Uh, they, all, uh, they also really help out the Zygarde uh, quite a bit. They really synergize pretty well with Zygarde. Uh, Mega Gallade is a severely good wall breaker that could help uh, Zygarde function better, as well as Swallow if you really want to click that Specs Boom Burst. And Zoroark is a bag of fun. And fun you can say that allow. again. <laughs> I allow fun points, and Zoroark is a bag of fun. Yeah, like, uh, on the topic of Zoroark, uh, Zoroark could be disguised as something like, um, I don't know, uh, Heatran, and then, like, maybe he'd go for, uh, the ground move, which, like, I mean, Zoroark's pretty frail, but, like, you can live that, then, like, easily kill it again. Uh, yeah, Zoroark, like you said, Zoroark is a bag of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he doesn't have any... Psychic weaknesses, does he? Because psychic Unfortunately, weaknesses are the best no. ones to exploit with the Zoroark. Like, I love disguising my Zoroark as something like, uh, like, say, a Kinkelder or something like that. And then they'll go for a psychic move, and then, bam, they're gone. Because, uh, I'm a dark type. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I just like, uh, Lord Zen's team. I, I feel like it has a lot of, uh, well rounded. Pokemon there, but the one issue I do have is that Clefables is only wall with reliable recovery. It really is only Pokemon, except for maybe Swellow. That might get Roost, but who's clicking Roost on Swellow? Uh, it gets the Soft Boiled or the Moonlight, and it does get Wish, and I guess it could Wish Pass into other things, but uh, Clefable isn't necessarily the best Wish Passer, and you don't always want to run like Wish Protect on a Clefable, so... Yeah, I don't know, I just saw that as a bit of a problem, especially with a quad weakness in Heatran. Yeah, that's true. It's just, you know. There, there is like Rest Talk Suicune, which is a pretty common set. But yeah, other than other than uh, Clefable, he doesn't really have much in terms of like a reliable fallback wall. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, you know, you can always succeed without them. It's just, yeah, that's I really true. like to see reliable recovery, so. Like, you can um, actually wall your opponent. Last season, uh, GOT Season 1, the Goodbye Auras Tournament, if I remember correctly, Immortal Mence, um was like a full team of, had like a full team of offensive Pokemon. He didn't really have a reliable tank, and he still made it to like top 8. So, you can definitely win with, uh, without reliable walls. Yeah, but he doesn't have the, he doesn't have like full offense though. That's the thing. Like, he has. It, uh, I mean, yeah. Zygarde's kind of just more bulky offense, but like, more of that hyper offensive Pokemon would be things like, you know, Raikou, Swallow, Blade. <laughs> Zorark, but he doesn't really have a good hazard there to support that hyper offense because he's got these sturdy rockers, which really changed the team from being hyper offense to more of like, you know, offense, I guess. It's just, you've got this one wall and then, you know, slap a bunch of offensive Pokemon. Eh. It, it, it can only really function as a bulky offense team. There's not enough hyper offense there to really make that happen. So, uh, Anyway, coming in at number 11, we have Jacob, as always. And uh, I remember liking this team a lot. Uh, but Ben, go ahead and say what you think about this team. First thing I notice is that Lando T is a Z-mover. And I say that because... Um, Drew and I have discussed this before. Uh, <laughs> Don't even get into it. Okay, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Lando T is a good Z user. It's better um, scarped. I mean, what? Okay, so yeah. Jacob, um, he's got Komala there, and I think Komala is really underrated. It's, real, it's very bulky, really powerful, and like rapid spin, U-turn, return, wood hammer, play rough. Uh, it's got a plethora of moves. Uh, and the base stats to take advantage of them. Obviously, it's not gonna, like, one-shot everything, but, like, it's gonna do a lot of damage, while also, be able to eat, while also being able to eat up hits pretty well. Same can be said for Pokemon like, uh, Melodic, Mega Altaria, uh... His team's just, like, good in general. Like, he's got some things, yeah. they can take hits, dish, dish out damage. Uh, he's got the Fish Sharp there for Pursuit and Sucker Punch. 
Uh, Victini. Victini as a whole. Just click V, create, something dies. Lando T, obviously very powerful. I think it's better scarfed, but to each his own. Yeah, I mean, he's got really good wall breakers here. Like, I love Victini as a wall breaker, and Zerkatry is also really nice uh, as a wall breaker. He's got good setup options because he can set up with Mega Altaria. He can also set up with Decidueye or Bisharp. Uh, he's got good defense to fall back on with things like Milotic. And things like Mega Altaria, Lando, uh, Decidueye potentially, and Kamala, uh, they can all be defensive, actually, which could really help. Um, so he's got a lot of options that he's able to run with this team. And Lando T as the Z-Move user is the correct play. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just not. Zerkatry would be it better. Uh, that was one thing that I actually thought about. Uh, Zerkatry, I don't really know because I feel like it really gets helped by Z-Hypnosis or Z-Electric Terrain. And not having those options with Zerkatry makes it a lot less threatening. Because it's either going to be Scarfed or it's just going to be really powerful. There's no in between. Yeah. It's going to be really powerful with Tail Glow, or it's going to be a Scarfer. And if you know those are the only two real potential sets, then you can combat that pretty well. Uh, but the other thing about this team that I'm not too sure of is having both Decidueye and Bisharp, because at least as setup sweepers, they do kind of similar things. Decidueye, of course, does have the defensive side to it with Defog and stuff like that. He also gets a U-turn to, you know, do stuff like that. He can be a better Scarfer as well. But uh, a very popular set on Decidueye is the Sword Stance, what, Leaf Blade, Spirit Shackle, Sucker Punch set. Yeah, something like that. And Bisharp is also a Sword Stance, Sucker Punch, Spammer, but it's just stronger than Decidueye. Uh, so I'm not sure if there will ever be a situation where it's like, I have to run Decidueye over the Bisharp. That's kind of a little issue I have with the team, but other than that, I think it's really well-rounded and can do some serious damage to the opponents. I agree. Ben, we don't agree. You are correct. Lando, Lando T is not meant to be a Z-mover. We never agree. <laughs> anyway, uh, coming in at number nine, or number ten, actually, we have Pi and... Yummy. Whoa, this is a threatening team. Um, Karen Black is broken. We all know that. Uh, what can take a hit from a Karen Black? Nothing. And somebody in the comments goes, Oh, this can take a hit from a Karen Black. And shut up. Uh, <laughs> Lando T is great. Uh, and everyone knows that. Mega Venusaur is bay. We all love Mega Venusaur too. And then having Metagross and Mandibuzz there is really nice. As well as the Milotic. Uh, really, the Mega Venusaur Milotic core is going to be tough to break through. Uh, Mandibuzz is a really underrated defensive Pokemon that I really don't see thrown around too much. Uh, and I tried to look more and more for issues with this team. Uh, but I couldn't really find many. The one issue I do have with this team is that Metagross and Lando T are really the only rockers on this team and I find that a lot of times you don't really want either of them to be rockers because Metagross it likes to be banded it likes to be assault vest sometimes it likes to set up rocks but not all the time Lando T it likes to be defensive and be able to set up rocks but it also likes to be you scarfed. know banded scarf yeah thank uh, you dual dance you know there's other options with Lando uh and another thing, a lot of people could be questioning why didn't he put the Z-Move on Lando T. I like the Karen Black Z-Move, uh, personally. Same. Because that free shock is just insane. It also allows Lando T to be scarfed. Lando T can be scarfed even if it has the Z-Move option. I mean, that's yes. true. Um, yeah, like, that's what I did in March Madness. Yeah. Which was stupid, but... Um, Very much so. I shouldn't have made Lando my Z-Move in the first place. I mean, no, what? Moving on. <laughs> yeah, but what do you have to say about Pi's team? Um, it's really strong. Um, he's got the aromatisse there for potential wish, pa wish passing. Mandibuzz, um, as you were saying before, very underrated tank. It's just like super defensive, uh, has access to roost for sustain. Um, Blaziken Blaze, again, underrated. Uh, cause like, people think Blaziken with speed boost is good. But Blaziken Blaze is... I mean, it's, it, obviously it's not as good as it's, as speed boost, but uh, not being okay. Blaziken, oh my gosh, how do I say this? 
Oh, this is bad. The thing about Blaziken, though, I think it's a little bit slow for my liking, but if you do have the matchup, it can be really good. Yeah, and, like, it doesn't need speed boost to be good. I mean, it's strong in its own right. Just click Flare Blitz, and... Okay, something's not necessarily gonna die the same way. Victini's V-Crate kills something, but, like... It's still really strong, has a good move pool, uh, it can do a lot of stuff. It has agility, so it can kind of be... Yeah, kind of act as speed boost in a way. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, it's he's got, got options a, there. He's got a non-Z mover in Lando, which is cool. But yeah, I really like the way, you know, Kieran Black punches holes through the team, and then he's got these really bulky Pokemon to be able to take stuff out. If he really wants to run offense, though, that's where issues start to lie. Because uh, he doesn't have the greatest offense. Uh, actually, Hello, like, Kieran Lando Metagross Blaziken. Okay. Okay, as a whole team, though, he's got four Pokemon that are all offensive, of course, but he doesn't have, like, a lot of his bulky Pokemon can't be offensive. Mandibuzz, Milotic, and Aromatisse, for example, all just really can't do that well offensively. Um, you know, Mega Venusaur can be offensive, but a lot of the time it kind of gets put back into that defensive role because it just checks so much if you, uh, you know, EV it correctly. So... That's a minor issue I have with the team, but... Well, Mandibuzz has foul play. Uh, Melodic, generally, I run Melodic more... Well, as a kind of, like, mixed... Uh, some bulk investment, some offensive investment. So, like, uh, Melodic, in my mind, is more of an offensive Pokemon than a defensive Pokemon. Um, You're... What? What? <laughs> yeah. How is Melodic more offensive than defensive? Have you ever heard of that strong specs Milotic? No, you haven't. Well, no. But I usually, uh, I generally run like modest max special attack, max HP. Maybe I'm just that's, crazy. That's you being crazy. I mean, yeah. Suicune's better than that. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly because like Milotic's ability competitive, uh, it increases the special attack even more when intimidated. So I like to take advantage of that, run a more offensive set in general. But most of the time, people run Marvel scale, so... Well, well that's... Well, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Anyway, <laughs> Aromatisse uh, is really the only thing that can't do much damage. It gets Moonblast, that's about it. Toxic? Uh-uh. But yeah, in terms of Pokemon that can only take hits and not dish out damage, that's just like Aromatisse in my mind. Um... I guess we disagree on that, but <laughs> we can move on to the next squad. Uh, we got Ace of Base, and this team is sexy. Like, this is the type of team where you just want to stick your penis in it and... Uh, Excuse me, what? Make sure you ejaculate uh, and please yourself that way. This is a great team, actually. I really like. This what team. are you? What are you on right now? Drugs. Yeah, clearly. Y um, you don't say. <laughs> I love Megalopony. I love Thunderous. I love Latias. I love Zuma. I love trapping things with Gothitelle. Donphan's a great spinner. Thorthorn's got that quad weakness, which is really annoying. But, you know, all around this is a good team. And Volcarona is just, you know, if you don't prep for Volcarona, you can put your head straight between your legs, kiss your ass goodbye. Uh, you know, he's got options for defense. He's got options for offense all around. He's got, you know, centralizing threats and things like Megalopony, Volcarona, Zumeral. He's got the good support options if he really wants to run them. He's got a good spinner. Can trap any threat he sees and be like, hey, you, I don't want to go against you. Then Gothitelle comes in. Unless it's ghost type. Or, you know, something with a shed shell. Or, <laughs> you're not, you're, you know, you're forcing things to run shed shell. So, Gothitelle's amazing. And this team is really good, actually. I really like this team a lot. I agree. Uh, it's really, really strong. But, like, it, you were saying a second ago, uh, Gothitelle doesn't trap ghosts. Gothitelle wouldn't want to be against a ghost type in the first place. Yeah, I know, but, I mean, you can always run, like, a Scarf. <laughs> scarf Gothitelle's a good set. Uh, that has never even crossed my mind before. 
I really like running Scarf Gothitelle, and then you switch in and you trick a choice scarf onto a bulk, uh, uh, bulky Pokemon, and then, you know, they can't do anything. Okay. And they have to stay in too, and then they get locked into, like, Taunt. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, but yeah, I think he's just got so many options here. What else do you have to say, though, Ben? Um, he's got a uh, he's got a couple of good hazard setters in Ferrothorn and Donphan. He's got Donphan as a good spinner. A um, couple of good setup options. Uh, a few good setup Lottie options actually. To get the yep, there's that too. Um, I really like Pokemon like Megalopunny that are super fast and also dish out a good bit of damage. Like yeah, Megalopunny, uh, Mega Beedrill, uh, Mega Manectric, Pokemon like that. I really like them. Megalopunny's dual stabs are unresisted. That too. That's so a, nice. that's a big thing. <laughs> And Azumarill, once it sets up a Belly Drum, there's not a lot that can stop it. Obviously, there are, like, things that are faster than it that can take Aqua Jets. But if you don't have one of those on your team, you're kind of screwed. Well, also, if he just wants to run Banded to break stuff, because Azumarill's probably yeah. the best wall breaker. So. I mean, there's That's also, like, Megalopunny. Megalopunny is not too much of a wall breaker. It's just a good physical attacker. It doesn't really break too many walls because it's not strong enough necessarily. But you slap like a choice man on the zoom reel and that thing is strong as hell. <laughs> that is true. Um But yeah, I really like Ace of Base's team, but going on to the next one. Uh coming in at number eight, we have Stive. And this team's okay to me. Uh, I see stuff I do like, I see stuff I don't like. Uh, this is another team where I see no ground immunities. You could say, oh, Superior could check ground types technically. Superior does not like to be defensive at all. His best answer to ground types is probably Necrozma. He also Shop. has... He could also Orsal be flying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you're restricted to run Silvali flying just to have a ground immunity, I'm not too big of a fan. But... He does have a lot of stuff that I like. One thing I'm also confused about, I know Tapu Fini and Azumarill do very different things, but they're still water fairy types. And that that kind of confuses me. Maybe if you got a different like wall breaking water type, I'd be like, hey, that's cool. But I never you know. even noticed that, but that's hilarious. <laughs> I noticed it. But he's got a lot of great things. Like I love Scolipede. Uh, I love Garchomp. The Krasma's great. Uh, I think Mega Tyranitar is a really nice mega pick, actually. Because not many things have, like, good answers to DD Tyranitar. And Mega Tyranitar can just break everything and sweep. And yeah, also yeah. combined with a lot of things like, uh, you know, Azumarill. It, he's got a lot of good options on this team. He's got defensive mons that can also be offensive if he really wanted to. He's got a solid defogger with Tapu Fini. He's got good rockers. He's got like Garchomp, Necrozma, and Mega Tyranitar, as well as a Scolipede that can send spikes if it really wanted to. Uh, I see everything there. Uh, you know, Savali, if he has any problems, he can always just run Savali with a specific plate, and that's good. So I like it. I agree. Is that all you have to say? <laughs> I mean, like. Uh, the Tyranitar, uh, it has an incredible move pool, and like you were saying, it's an incredible wall breaker. Savali can be any type, so if there's a Pokemon on a team that, um, he doesn't have an answer to, he can use Savali and, like, work with it, like, see if there's a type of, if there's a Savali type that can resist, like, all the moves that he would expect that Pokemon to be packing. Uh, Azumarill, as we just saw before, uh, can be Bandit, can be Belly Drum, uh, good wall breaker. Scolipede is cool. Superior, uh... <laughs> That's all you have to say about Skull. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Superior, uh, 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 you just Mega click Storm kind of win. Savali does this and that. Zumarill is uh, pretty cool. We just talked about it. Skullpeed's cool. Uh, Superior, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Necrozma, uh, can do... Can set rocks. Wait. I gotta stop you again. What? How did you say that? What? Necrozma. Did you say Necroz? What? Necrozma, Necrozma, same difference. It doesn't matter. It's it's not Necrozma. <laughs> Guess what? Guess what? I don't care. I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, return. 
Okay. Uh, Necrozma. Uh, it can set rocks. Uh, it can be a tank. It can set up Trick Room if you really want it to. Uh, you got Garchomp there. It can be offensive. You can make it defensive uh, with, like, Rocky Helmet, Rough Skin. You got Feeny there. Uh, similar to Garchomp, can be offensive, defense, except de off oh, bleh. can be offensive or defense. Ex it, de 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 oh my gosh, I can't English. Tapu Fini can be offensive, but it would generally be more, a more bulky variant because, like, I I would never expect to see anybody running like a Fini with speed investment. Uh, but oh, yeah, I've seen it a lot on combine sets. That's really good. That 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 that's never I've never uh, okay. You just don't see the power. Um, no, because anyway, Blue is the better topic. But Feeny does completely different things. Blue is better in general, and I don't care. Your opinion is meaningless to me. Moving on. Uh, where are we at? Number seven now. We got Mighty Mamoswine. That's how everyone should say it. Mighty Mammoth uh, Why, though? Why not? Um, because I said because so. I, to I told the people that they should say it that way. When? Just then. <laughs> um, anyway, though, he's got a very similar looking team to... Who was it? It was, uh... Was it Dineki earlier? He's got the Mega Gardevoir and uh, the Salamence. <laughs> I think those were both on uh, Dineki's team, but I think he kind of rounds this one out more. Uh, he's got really, like, he doesn't have the best defensive options, but he has a good pivot in Kabalion, which can set rocks reliably. Delmius is a good spinner. Uh, Diggersby is an insane wall breaker, and having that along with the Mega Gardevoir, and then he could sweep with the Salamence, or potentially a Kabalion too. Maybe even Gengar if he really wanted to. I like Vaporeon a lot to fall back on for bulk, and it's also, it's also got a wish that you could pass into something like Delmize if you really wanted it to, or Kabalion to let it be a, you know, like, <laughs> get that health back and be a better pivot in a way. So, also he's got Ghost Band, and I think Ghost Band is great. He's got Delmize and Gengar, and then he's got Weavile with, you know, Dark type attacks. And Dark and Ghost are pretty similar. Yeah, except uh, that, you know, types. Dark resists Ghosts. I'm saying offensively. Though. Okay, offensively, basically. Yeah, they're very similar. So, I, I think Dark Spam and Ghost Spam are some of the best uh, offensive spams in the game. So I really like that, too. Uh, I just like a lot of things on this team. Uh, I'm trying to remember what weaknesses I saw. I think I saw that electric types could be a bit of a problem for him because Diggersby is not necessarily the greatest answer to electric types, but he's got things like Mega Gardevoir that could eat up a Volt Switch pretty well if it really wanted to, or Delmize. Uh, but a lot of things will be running uh, coverage for Delmize, so. What do you think, Ben? Uh, I think Vaporeon is one of my favorite wish passers in the game. Um... Like, what's better than that? Chansey? Well, let's see, that's about it. Uh, Vaporeon, definitely uh, an incredible tank. Great wish passer. Uh, it's got Scald, so it's not set up fodder. Uh, the Gengar there. Gengar lost Levitate in the 7th generation, but when you think about it, that doesn't really affect all that much. Obviously, it's going to die to a ground move now, but that's all that's changed. Uh, so, Gengar is just pretty much just as good as it was in Gen 6, minus the whole ground immunity thing. Diggersby, very underrated. Well, I mean, I thought, well, I thought it was, um, just kind of meh before, um, a friend, Hasty Swamper, used it in UPA Season 6. He's just been destroying everything with it, so now I see Diggers being a whole new light. And it's like, um, now I know that it's, like, a really good wall breaker and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, and it, even though it's pretty slow, it's got quick attack for priority if you really want to. Or you can just run a banded set. And just kind of kill stuff. Yeah, okay. Uh, the, the Delmize, obviously, uh, good spinner. Uh, it's got a... Uh, it's, it's move pool isn't super diverse, but, like, it can cover for a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, like, got uh, Earthquake. Uh, what else does it get? Uh, anchor Shot. Yeah, okay, moving on. Uh, Cobalion. Anchor Shot. Yeah, uh, Cobalion. so nice. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, Cobalion, uh, it can be physical, it can be special. Uh, I like the special sets because that means I can use Volt Switch. 
Salamence, uh... Or you can be physical and just have Volt Switch for your initiative to use your pivot, but... I mean, I do that all the time. In the Salamence, you can set up a Dragon Dance, kill something, get the Moxie Boost, then sweep. Weavile, uh, it's good for, like, killing stuff and stuff, you know, because that's how Pokemon is a thing. Mega Gardevoir, uh, like you said before, good wall breaker. Yeah, I just think it's a pretty well-rounded team. I could see maybe defenses being a bit of a problem. He's got to rely on Vaporeon. He, he a lot, has Vaporeon. That he's good. That doesn't make you good though. Literally, GOT season one of Vaporeon was my only real tank. I didn't lose a single game. Doesn't matter. Different people, different teams, stuff like that. I'm just talking about the team in general. I'd like to see more Vaporeon. Okay, but uh, anyway, at number six uh, we have iPro. And I'll be there in just a sec to high pro. I'm trying to find his team I as well. Just screwed up the sheet really quick. Oh, uh, anyway, high pro's got a pretty nice team. He's got a pretty similar team to who was it earlier? Uh, I saw Zygarde and Clefable as well. Uh, oh, uh, was that? Uh, it was Lord Zedin. That was yeah, him. Uh, but this one, I think it's kind of better, well-rounded in a way. Uh, I don't know how I feel about Zygarde being the Z-move user, though, because I could have seen... Yeah, he doesn't really have the greatest Z-move users, but he could have run something like Clefable, I guess. Um, maybe Nidoqueen. Uh, I don't know. Z-moves would be kind of tough with this one. So, I guess it's not the worst thing that Zygarde's a Z-move user. Yeah. Uh, but he, he's got so many good options here. He's got wall breakers, because he's got Heracross and Nidoqueen and... Uh, he's got setup sweepers with Clefable and Mega Gyarados. He's got good scarfers with Heracross. Uh, he's also got setup sweeper and Zygarde. Why didn't I say Zygarde? He's got Gothitelle, which again can trap any threat. He's got, you know, what, Clefable, Zapdos, Ferrothorn. All of those can really just probably be defensive answers to everything there is. Uh, Zapdos is a nice debogger. It'd be nice if he had a spinner, though, so he could do spike stacking uh, more efficiently and not have to. Uh, you know, rely on defog for hazard removal. That, that's one minor issue I have with the team. But he's got, a, uh, what, three rockers and a spiker, which is really nice for hazard options. Um, yeah, I just really like this team in general. So what do you think, Ben? Uh, like, I, I, I agree with the Shed. Did I just say I agree with you, Shed? Okay, anyway. Uh, moving on from my terrible English. Uh, I really like um, Heracross. Uh, if you scarf it, um, it can just, it just kills something. Uh, Mega Horn, Close Combat, Earthquake, Knock Off. It's got a pretty good move pool. Uh, Got the Tell, Trap Stuff. Gyarados, uh, Setup Sweeper, Wall Breaker, all that good stuff. And, like, if Gyarados sets up a sub, you really need to break that, like, really quickly. Also, side note about Gyarados, it's weak to both Volt Switch and U-Turn, so that's cool. I only just noticed that. Uh, Nidoqueen... Uh, it can be it can be a rock setter. Um, it can be sheer force life orb with like um, sludge wave, earth power, ice beam, flamethrower, thunderbolt, shadow ball. It's a plethora of moves. Ferrothorn. Uh, I would say it's a good wall, but it doesn't really have sustain other than leech seed. It's just bulky though. Which yeah. Is really nice. the, the issue with Ferrothorn is the quad weakness. Yeah, that's also true. And he doesn't have anything um, with flash fire or anything like that. Um, he does have... Yeah, he's, got, he's got decent fire answers, though, because Zygarde can switch into fire attacks, but... Zygarde I mean, probably if doesn't... Running, if something's running HP fire, they're likely to not have HP ice, if they don't have ice... Yeah, you don't say! Good things can happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I I mean, he's got other options like Clefable and Zapdos, which can take hits. Uh, Nino Queen is pretty good against fire types, and if it's self... And then Mega Gyarados can just set up on fire types so he, yeah. it's not like he's worried about fire types he's just worried about that surprise hp fire yeah but that's true but like um ferrothorn is so bulky it can live hp fires i've seen it happen oh yeah it definitely lives hp fires but it still takes like 60 to 70 percent yeah and then uh clefable can heal it up with wish so that's cool but clefable's not the greatest wish bastard <laughs> but who cares and ferrothorn also resists both of clefable's weaknesses I mean, it's immune to poison altogether. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, stuff. Uh, Alright, moving anyway, on. Coming in at number 
five, we have Ethan. Uh, and Ethan's team, I looked at it more and more, and it kind of just grew on me more and more. The triple weather yeah. is kind of weird. But the thing I like is he's got Heliolisk, which abuses all those weathers. And he's got Seismitoad, which can be a rain sweeper, and people can kind of be thrown off by that. He's got a Moongus, which is really good for sand teams. And it's also really good for rain teams. Uh, it just is a good pivot. Uh, Scarberry is a really good hazard setter. Zard Y and Tyranitar are just a great core. And also both insane wall breakers. He's got Mew, which could probably just do stuff. And, you know, people forget about Mew because they'll be focusing on all this weather. And then it's like, bam, I have a Mew, you know? And then they'll be like, damn, I just got Mew. So. <laughs> I just got mewed down by by Mew. And um, I like this stuff. <laughs> and Mew can take advantage of the weathers with like its gigantic move pool. Like, uh, it can run something like Thunder for the rain. Uh, something like I don't know what other moves does it get that would do that. I don't know. Whatever. Skarmory, uh is immune to the sand, so uh, he could like bring Tyranitar, then like have kind of like a sand core there in a sense. Skarmory doesn't get a special defense boost because it's not a rock type, but I mean, the opponent's taking chip damage and you're not. Uh, Amoongus, like you were saying before, a good pivot. Especially in rain good, because uh, fire. A really good pivot on weather teams in general, besides fire. Or, uh, sun <laughs> teams. Uh, yeah, that would be <laughs> bad. And yeah, Heliolisk is really the thing that brings the entire team together. It's like, it's like the glue in a way, because like, uh, it really does take advantage of all three weathers, and you never know which one it's going to be. Unless, you know, he doesn't bring Zard Y or Pelipper, then you know he's going to take advantage of the sand. Okay, yeah. I think this team would be a lot cooler if it had Excadrill over Skarmory, but... That might have been taken by then. Like... Yeah, it might have been taken. It was probably taken. Excadrill is really popular in the format, so... Oh, yeah. But I still really like Ethan's team. I think he's got a lot of options, and... Uh, you know, you gotta prep for a lot of different sweeping options at the end of the game. You gotta prep for all these hazards. There's still a lot of good bulk there. Uh, I mean, just relying on Amoongus as a pivot, for example, could be a, good enough for him. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also those wall breakers with Tyranitar and Zard Y. It's just so sexual. It's pretty great. What? Yeah, I just said it. Um, okay! Anyway, coming in at number four, we have Farty. And, uh, Farty has got some good stuff here. One issue I have is the speed tiers, immediately. He's got Jolteon, and he's got Keldeo. And then he's got, I think, three base 100 uh, speed Pokemon, and two base 80 speed Pokemon, and Muck doesn't care about speed. So it's just really weird speed tiers right there. But he does have a nice Dragon Fairy Steel core going. Uh, I guess you could argue his Fire Water Grass core is also good. But then again, he also only has a Defogging Togekiss for uh, Zardex that will have to take rocks. And then also wear itself down with Flare Blitz. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's iffy to me. I know Ben really likes it though. Oh yeah. So. Like, he was able to get Shaman round 8, Jolteon round 7, Alolan Muck round 6, Keldeo round 5, Tokius round 4, what is this madness? His team is very good in my mind, like, all the Pokemon uh, on their own are, like, worthy of being picked much, early, much earlier on in the draft in my mind. Um, yeah, he may only have Togekiss for hazard removal, and with Charizard, that is a problem, but all in all, I think it's the best team in the entire conference. I disagree. <laughs> like, I don't think the speed tiers are a huge deal. Because, like, um, Keldeo to Jolteon, it's not the worst thing in the world. Because, like, 108 to uh, 130, uh, that's not the biggest gap, and there aren't a whole lot of Pokemon that fall between it. Yeah, it's mainly the, like, 100 to 80 area that really scares me. Uh, but if you went against something with, uh, like, you know, base 125 speed, if that happened... It'd be okay, really yeah. easy to run Modest or Adamant, for example. But if he's running uh, a base... Uh, I don't know, like base 95, let's go with that. Then he can run Adamant or Modest, no matter what, and outspeed two different threats. Just, yeah, that's true. You know, 
and not have to worry about, you know, speed creeping, the higher threats. So, you know, that's something I always take into account, and also just the hazard problems. Um, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan. It, it, it could work out, but... And also, uh, Jirachi is a Z-mover. Jirachi can do anything. It can even have Z mud slap. Jirachi would be a better Z mover if uh, Z happy hour was allowed, but it's not. Oh yeah, that would be way too good. My favorite Z mover on his team might have been Keldia. I think that would have been a good Z move cho uh, choice. But... I, I like the Jirachi pick. Jirachi's like... an okay pick. But, um... Anyway, we're gonna get right to the next part of it. Number three, we have Prof Chipboard, Professor Chipboard, and uh, this team is very nice as well. Uh, Top Coco is Bay, Excadrill is Bay, Buzzwolf is also Bay. Um, you know, uh, I, I like a lot of those Pokemon. Uh, one thing I do immediately see though. He could lack on the Fizz Def side a little bit, but his offense is spectacular, and he's got a lot of options with this team. Uh, he's got Mega Tyranitar into Excadrill, and I mean, if you're managing your sand turns well, then that could be just a giant threat right there. If you've got, uh, you know, a good Regenerator pivot on that sand, that's good. Um, Buzzwall's a huge offensive threat in of itself, and it can just break walls like nothing else. Uh, Top of Coco is incredible. Everyone, I think, knows why. Uh, I want to be an extra drill my Z-Move user, though. I'll say that. He's got a really nice sweeping option with uh, Superior, too. Staraptor, also a great wall breaker. So, he's got good bulk there with, you know, things like Gudra, Slowking, Buzzwool, Tyranitar to an extent. Even Excadrill can be bulky if you wanted it to. Uh, he's got good offense, and I really went over that in depth just a few seconds ago. Uh, his hazard options are fine, but he's got Excadrill and Mega Tyranitar. It's just, if he wants to run one of them as a rocker, it limits their potential because Mega Tyranitar likes to be a Dragon Dancer, and Excadrill likes to be a Sand Sweeper, or... You know, maybe a scarf or something like that. So, it seems really nice in general. I really like it. I really like um, Superior, Staraptor, and Slowking. Like, I really like them on their own, but like on the same team. Uh, that's, re that's really, really cool. Uh, you got Slowking there. Uh, it's really, obviously it's slow. Uh, it's really bulky. It can, dish it can dish out damage with its, I don't even remember its base special attack, but I know it can dish out damage. <laughs> I've used it before. It's very good. I think it's base 100. And then Wait, you, really? Yeah, and then I think Slowking gets Nasty Plot. I know it gets Calm Mind, but yeah. get Nasty Plot too. It gets Nasty Plot as well, so you can like uh, Trick Room, Nasty Plot, then like Scald, Psy Shock, destroy everything. Except for, you know, something that has Water Absorb and is a Dark type. Like Cacturn. Yeah. That, might, that, might, that, might, that might be it. <laughs> uh, Staraptor. Like great move pool too. Oh yeah, that's very true. Slowking has a really good move pool. Fire Blast, Shadow Ball, uh, I don't remember the rest off the top of my head, but I know that it's good. Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, or does it get Thunderbolt? I'm I don't sure think it gets Thunderbolt. It gets Grass Knot, though. It gets, it gets Skull, Tasha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like this team a lot, though. Anything else you have to say? Straptor is really, really, really good. And that's, we've seen a lot of it. bird spam weaknesses, so... Yeah, so I think, um... Raptor's going to be putting in a lot of work. And also, I, I looked defensively, and I didn't see many glaring weaknesses on this team. I don't think I really see any, actually. Like, I looked, and there's nothing huge there. There's not, like, a glaring defensive weakness that I was able to see immediately. I could not be looking in-depth enough, because, let's be real, I don't have too much time, and I don't go, like, break down each team for, like, an hour. The only thing I could possibly see would be, like, mm, an electric type that also has good coverage and stuff. Because, I mean, um, the top of Coco is setting up electric terrain. You're just boosting the power of electric type attacks. Yeah, and Gudra eats up those hits. That's true. But, like, what if it's and a physical attack? And checks every, uh, almost every electric type. How about Electivire with, with an air balloon? And then you have Gudra. Ice Punch. Um... Then, uh, yep. 
Buzzman. HP flying. Give me a break. <laughs> uh, okay. So coming in at number two, we have the, uh, the the Cameron, and Cameron's team is also very sexy. Uh, he has a lot of great options here. He's got really nice bulk options. He's got really nice attacking options. He's got so much good stuff here. Uh, He's got a little mini regenerator core with Torn T and Tangrowth, which is really nice. Torn T is a good assault vest user. Tangrowth can be defensive on both sides. Hydreion could be too. Technically, Rotom Wash could be, as well as Jirachi, and then Hippowdon. And a lot of these Pokemon that I mentioned right here that can be defensive can also be offensive. Uh, you know, Jirachi can be offensive. Torn T can have a really nice Life Orb set. Hydreigon's just an insane wall breaker. Uh, Rotom Wash, if you really wanted it to, you could make it Scarf or Specs. Uh, he's got nice support options with Crobat. It's a really good Defogger right there. Um, he does have only Hippowdon and Jirachi to set rocks, but that's fine with an eight-team format. Uh, Embor is also a very good wall breaker. He's got a really good wall breaking core with Hydreigon and Embor. And he's got good revenge killers like Torn, uh, Crobat. So yeah, I'm a really big fan of this team. Scarf Jirachi is a threat if you really want to run that, or Scarf Hydreigon. He's got good speed tiers all around. I like this team quite a bit. Yeah, I agree. Um, the Tangrowth uh, Tornadus Regenerator Core, uh, I really like that. Uh, I don't know if it was intentional or not, but uh, I, I do really like that that's there, because like, um, it's, it, it's, it's cool and stuff. Okay. Um, because it hates <laughs> ice types. <laughs> yeah, that would be a problem. Except he does have like Rotom Wash, Embor, Jirachi, and that that's literally it. <laughs> yeah, other than that though, he's completely weak to ice. That's the one issue I had with his team. That could be a problem, but uses. like, when you look at it, Embor, both of its stabs will destroy any ice type. Pretty much. Yeah, but most of the time it's just gonna be something running ice beam because there's not that many good ice types. <laughs> that is also true. So, I mean, I like Cameron's team a lot. I think he has a lot of options there. He's got a lot of good versatility. Um, also, his walls do have recovery, and then uh, he's got a good wish passer with Jirachi. Rotom Wash is his only uh, wall that does not have recovery in any sort of fashion, except for Pain Split. Yeah, it does get on, give me a break. Pain Split's not the best. Uh, and Jirachi's just a solid wish passer, too. So I really like Cameron's team. I think he's got a lot of different things he could do, a lot of different tricks and tactics he could have. Uh, he's got a good balance of physical and special attackers, all that good stuff. I like Cameron's team a lot. You got anything else to say, Benny Boy? Um, not really, although the, just like, I, I can't stop thinking about that ice weakness. But yeah, yeah. He, he does have some Pokemon that um, switch into it pretty well, though. Particularly Rotom and Jirachi, because like they can um, uh, U turn and Volt Switch out. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we're moving on to the number one team in number the Kalos Conference. This is. Th th this team is. Whew, I think Ben and I can both agree. This team is super good. We got oh, yeah. Mio, and whew, it's got some similarities to, I think it's uh, Pi's team. With the Kieran Black and Mega Venusaur there. But I think this just patches up the weaknesses so much better. Um, I, I tried to look for, you know, things that could just offensively tear through this team. And I was like, there's nothing. I don't see anything that could threaten this team too much. He's got, uh, you know, like Starmie for the hazard removal as well as Togekiss to defog. He's got Crocodile and Miltank, as well as Nihilego to set up rocks. He's got uh, a lot of good sweeping options with Nihilego, Crocodile, uh, Celesteel if you want to run an autonomized set. He's got a really good wall breaker in Kieran Black. Crocodile can also be a wall breaker if you really want to hit to. Crocodile is really diverse in that way. Almost all of his uh, defense can also be offensive, so it's a really nice bulky offense team. Uh, yeah, I'm just a huge fan of this. Like, I'm trying to look through the weaknesses I see in this team, and I'm like, I can't find it. The only thing, the only thing I could possibly see, is maybe like a strong physical fire type, like maybe Entei, uh, clicking Sacred Fire. Like he doesn't really have a nope. whole lot of switch into that. Nope. 
He's what? got mill tank, which has oh thick right fat. thick fat. Okay. And then he can also run defensive Starmie if he really wanted to. Yeah, but like Starmie uh, isn't the good... bulkiest thing in the world. Yeah, it's not the bulkiest thing, but he also gets natural cure just in case it gets burned. It's easily gonna be able to revenge uh, Ente. And uh, what else was I gonna say? Um, I had something on my mind, but I forgot, so I'm not gonna keep kicking myself in the head about it. Uh, what about Mega Charizard <laughs> Y with um, Solar Beam and Focus Blast? Uh, you run Special Defensive Chopal no Tank. Oh. Right, that's a thing that exists. Yeah. I mean, there's just a, a bunch of options here. I really like this team. Also, his walls, besides Celesteela, have reliable recovery. Um, and Celesteela still gets uh, Leech Seed. He's got uh, Togekiss and Miltank as two clerics. They've both got Heal Bell, which is actually really interesting. Togekiss could run Wish if it really wanted to. But he's got a bunch of viable Scarfers, too. He's got good wall breakers. Huge fan of this team. It's just so well-rounded. That's why I like to see in a team. And also, I just noticed something. How did he get into Heligo round 8? A lot of people don't like the Heligo too much, but... That's because it can't do too much. It's not too versatile. Well, it has a decent move pool, and, like, Beast Boost, it, it, it can destroy stuff. Yeah. Well, if you look at all the uh, GOT drafts, you're just going to see that Nihiligo kind of went in different places in all of them. It either went in, like, the top three rounds or the last three rounds. So it was pretty shaky there. Yeah, and he also got Tokigus around six. So that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. But I don't think value matters as much as team composition does, so... Yeah. Anyway, I think that's it for our rankings, so, uh... GOT is going to be a really fun time for everyone involved in it, and everyone who is watching it, I hope you've not only enjoyed this video, but all the other, uh, Power Rankings videos that you've watched. Uh, please make sure to check out everyone who's doing the Power Rankings. Please make sure to check out Aster, who's hosting the GOT. And it, make sure to check out any of the coaches that, uh were mentioned just search up their name because there's a lot of good players in the GOT and there's a lot of great people too so I highly recommend you check all of them out anything you got to say Ben uh not really nothing I mean I was no. about to I was about to say subscribe to me but then I was like oh wait I haven't uploaded in like forever I'm, yeah, I'm gonna get to that though I'm gonna do that eventually you, you should have had a shameless plug that was your problem Okay, yeah. Shameless plug time. Follow me uh, on Twitter and stuff. And <laughs> subscribe to me on YouTube and all that good stuff. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll see you guys later. Peace. See ya.